and so this is where we usually go internally but it's useful to to imagine it as a report because we don't have a total down here if you look at the report the idea is this is a sub ledger report breaking out this information not by date but by who owes us the money and it should tie into what's on the balance sheet at any given time and that's why the the zero system will often not let us enter a transaction on for accounts receivable unless we have assigned a customer to it otherwise the sub ledger would not tie out to the accounts receivable and that would be messy so if we the other one the inventory as we saw before if we're tracking i'm going to duplicate again if we're tracking inventory within the accounting uh, system on a perpetual inventory basis then we will have inventory reports so if i go to my inventory i'll just type in inventory and i look at my inventory item list this is another sub ledger report that will be adjusted as we do inventory transactions purchasing inventory with bills checks uh and so on and then and then uh decreasing inventory on a perpetual basis with sales forms invoices and money out forms so you can see our inventory list here this will be adjusted the number of inventory 2896 as we do transactions uh that would increase and decrease inventory on a perpetual basis and then we've got the fixed assets they don't again the sub reports for the fixed assets in the united states oftentimes we might do those externally in tax software for a lot of many small businesses will do that because you have to do tax basis uh depreciation and so you might as well use the software to do both book and tax so we'll deal with those later uh in practice what you need to do for tax preparation at the end of the year is make sure that you have a list of the new purchases and the sales that happened during the year which there shouldn't be many of because uh we don't buy a lot of equipment from day to day we just buy periodically and then those adjustments need to be made on the sub ledger which might be on the tax software so that the proper accumulated depreciation can be calculated and then we can make periodic adjustments in our system either monthly or yearly based on that sub ledger so we'll talk more about that in the adjusting entries accounts payable has another common report so if i right click and duplicate again we've got our and let's go to the reports again and go to our reports and let's take a look at it. accounts payable accounts payable we've got accounts payable summary so similar report to the accounts receivable summary uh, and the idea is that we're going to break out our payable by vendor who owes who we owe money to so in practice we'll typically be tracking that by going to our customers and our suppliers or vendors or whatever you want to call them and there's our list but once again it doesn't give us the total and so you want to think about this from a reporting standpoint as a sub ledger breaking out your accounts payable by uh vendor supplier whatever and then the total is going to tie out to the liability account on the balance sheet all right and then we've got the credit card which will have bank credit card reconciliations we may need to deal with there's no real sub ledger for the loan payable except that you might have an amortization schedule which is provided externally typically by the uh who the bank or the financial institution but if they don't give you one then you you can generate one an amortization table that'll break out interest and and uh, 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 principal for each payment using Excel or online tools or ask your accountant to do that. So we'll talk more about uh, how to do that in future presentations. So those are some of the some of the reports that will be impacted as we do data input. So just remember, as we do the data input, then your primary thought is I'm going to check out what happens to my primary financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, and then. I'm also going to then think of what other subsidiary reports are going to be impacted 
keeping special attention to those accounts that I, I want to have very important and specific subsidiary ledgers for, that being the accounts receivable that has to be broken out by customer, inventory that has to be broken out by items of inventory, and accounts payable that needs to be broken out by uh, vendor as well. So when we do transactions to those accounts specifically, we want to make sure that we don't do something funny to it that throws that out of whack, like doing a journal entry to accounts payable instead of entering a bill which properly tracks the vendor and so on and so forth. So we'll take a look at that as we do data input uh, in the future. Let's take a quick look at some of the other reports. If I go to the tab to the right and go down to our reports down here, uh, we've got our favorite reports. We've got the financial reports, the analysis, the budget reports. These are these are reports that would help us to kind of make projections uh, out into the future. The financial statement reports, of course, being the balance sheet and the income statement being uh, the primary two reports, the payables and receivable, the aging reports for the payables and receivables that we looked at. Notice that all most of these reports are giving us more detail about one or multiple line items on the balance sheet or income statement. The reconciliation reports, bank reconciliations and credit card reconciliations primarily are an internal control type of report helping us to tie out to what is on the bank side or the financial institution. And then we've got our taxes. Our 1099 report are, are important for the United States. Journal reports can help us to give us that detail of the journal entries, a journal entry format, and then the general ledger, which is similar to those drilling down when you drill down on a particular number on the balance sheet, but it'll give you the whole general ledger transaction by date report typically. And then you got your transactions, uh, account transactions, duplicate lines, and uh, inventory item summary, and so on. So the general idea, you think first balance sheet income statement, all of these other reports are basically usually subsidiary reports giving you more information about one or multiple line items and that'll help you to kind of not be overwhelmed by the number of reports.